I think that he does a Kamehameha and completely blasts Beerus' head straight off. Oh, yeah, well, I think he misses, and I think he hits King Kai. <laughs> I think he actually just starts petting Beerus, and he starts purring. <laughs> well, yeah, either Beerus and, uh, or Bubbles. I could see Bubbles purring. He looks like a purrer. Thank you so much again for tuning in. Please smash that like button. It really helps out with the YouTube algorithm and for us to reach more people. What are your thoughts and opinions on today's episode? Please comment below. Let us know, and we'll get back to you in the comments. And if you do like this kind of content, we would definitely be very, very thankful if you would subscribe to this YouTube channel and turn on notifications so you get up to date when new videos are released. Thank you again, guys. Dylan, what are your thoughts on this? Vegeta's being forced to spend time with Trunks and Bulma, and I suppose they don't have another kid right now. They don't have, like, Bra. Is that her, like, wasn't that her name, I think? Yeah, I think that's right. Uh, no, she's not born yet. She comes a little later. But you know something that I always found really interesting about Vegeta, especially in Super? What's that, dude? Well, okay, so Vegeta goes on this big thing to try to look like he's not enjoying it and trying to look like he hates it. But you, we all know Vegeta's actually enjoying spending time with his family. That is kind of true. So I've heard other people say this, kind of, that the way Dragon Ball Z ended, where he kind of admitted that Goku was, like, superior to him and everything, that that was kind of all wiped out at the start of Super because he kind of doesn't think that way anymore at the beginning of Super. Yeah, I can definitely see that. It's like he regressed back to how he was mm -hmm. post uh, Majin Buu saga to trying to beat Goku and best him. It, I mean, it could also be, though, he, he thought that they were all going to die there at the end, and he just it was, he actually does believe it, but now that everything's back to normal, he's back to, oh, I'm better than you, and I'm going to surpass you someday type of attitude. Right. I think, honestly, that's the way the Vegeta character has to be. Like, the... It would just be kind of a boring character if he just admitted that Goku was just, like, better than him and more powerful. Like, that just wouldn't work as an entire series, I don't think. Did you know that Akira Toriyama did not like Vegeta, and that's why he always gets the short end of the straw in the show? That is baloney times a million. Vegeta is one of my favorite characters. If not, my, eh, I'm going to go with second favorite. i got to be a Goku supporter. He is my favorite. Yeah, you probably know this, but... I have my issues with Goku, but yeah, you're right. I think Vegeta is probably my favorite character. That I think he's my dad's favorite character too, so. Yeah, nothing wrong. I mean, it's hard to pick your favorite character in a show where there's so many characters that are easy to love, honestly. Mm -hmm. Oh, random thing. Here's a dinosaur I see in this uh, second episode too. Didn't they at one point like say there wasn't dinosaurs or something like that, I think, in an episode of Dragon Ball Z, and then there were dinosaurs again later on or something goofy? Well, that's the weird thing about Dragon Ball. Nobody knows what timeline this actually takes place in. I mean, is it back when dinosaurs were real? Is it in the future because they got flying cars and capsules you can have anything pop out of? Or is it some kind of, well, it is some kind of mixed, jumbled together timeline, I think. Yeah, I think you're probably right. So, and I guess they have the multiverse, but we just fast forwarded to hear a little bit to Whis and Beerus. Go into this, uh, I don't know what planet this is, but there's these forearm creatures, and this dude thinks he's a BA, and he's going to challenge Beer challenge Beerus right now. How do you think this one's going to end for him? I think he defeats Beerus, and the series is over. Yeah, I mean, I, I, like I said, it's been a while since I watched it, but that I can see it happening. <laughs> yeah, either that or we stops it, or steps in and just stomps him out right away. That would be kind of sweet, actually, even though it would be kind of ruin the series, but just, like, switch it up, like... I watched the series before, and then all of a sudden I'm re-watching it, and that happens, and I'm like, uh, I don't remember this. You know, uh, right now, it, it would be cool if we stepped in and did a little more at the start, but they're, they're trying so hard right now to uh, portray Lord Beerus as the strongest character in the universe, like nobody's stronger than mm -hmm. him. Later on, you find out, hey, Whis is actually his teacher, but right now, they want to make Beerus look unstoppable, otherwise it loses the climactic climactic fight scene with Super Saiyan God and it, it would mean less in my opinion. What about you? Yeah, you're right. And I mean, I think I'll save this for a different video where I think they should take Dragon Ball, but they're going to stretch this out as far as they humanly possibly can. I don't know why I said humanly, but as far as they possibly can with not having to battle the angels and with not having to battle uh, the, the Omni Kings just because once they do, like 
I don't know where you would go after that exactly. Well, I know where it's gonna go. You, uh, you curious here, buddy? Yeah, what's up? They're gonna have the new movie that's coming out, and I think I said this in the last one. I hope they animate Moro, or like you even said in our last video, bring Cooler into it. I think he'd be a cool canon character, and maybe that's a video we'll do here later on. But Dragon Ball characters that are not canon, which ones would you guys like to see canon? A video like that, I think, would be cool. That would be kind of fun. But, and, oh, real fast here, it looks like Burris, that dude, did not touch Burris at all. And that dude is, like, dead, so. Well, that, I, I, I did not see that coming, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Back to what I was saying, though, where I think it's going to go in the new movie is Yamcha is going to challenge the Omni Kings and just whoop them with one hand tied behind his back. <laughs> Yamcha? Yeah, ever since he lost to that Cyberman, he's probably been training in secret. <laughs> Dude, I could see it. Either that or they're going to bring back the Cybermen and they're just all of a sudden going to be, like, stronger than the Omni King. I could see it. I mean, they're not as cute as the Omni King, but I could see him being a little more ferocious. <laughs> oh, golly, Wiz. Okay, we got the Supreme Kais here again. They're playing chess, it looks like. No, it, it's Supreme Kai chess. It's like it, it's, it's on a different level. Okay, maybe they're not. Maybe they're just drinking tea. I was like, why would they have chess like on the Supreme Kai planet? I don't even know. No, yeah, they're just drinking tea. I'm a moron. That did look like a chess table, though. Let's be honest. I I didn't even question it. Oh, it looks like Beerus is blowing up that planet. That uh, I think they just went there for food or something and didn't get his way, so he just blew up the planet. Yeah, usually if Beerus don't like the food, then there's no need for the planet. Mm-hmm. All right, then we got, let's go here. It looks like Vegeta's still training at 150 times gravity, which honestly, what did Goku get up to? Goku got up to 100 times gravity on the way. On Namek. Yeah, that's, Vegeta, you freaking puss cake. What are you doing? <laughs> nice work choice. I like it. Uh, but yeah, so during the Android prep saga, they, Vegeta was training at 300 times gravity. What is he doing now? This literally should not be doing anything for him. Look at him struggling. So I'm going to go out on a limb here and just guess that Akira Toriyama forgot the gravity that he actually had set for like the Z saga and then he just randomly put in a number here and it happens to be like half the amount. Akira Toriyama does not forget stuff. What are you talking about? <laughs> Saying tails? Saying what? They don't have tails. Haven't you watched season seven and up? <laughs> right. And then Goku, of course, here later in episode two of Dragon Ball Super is trashing King Kai's planet just like every time king kai just happy he has a planet after the cell games i mean can you imagine just watching a fight from afar and all of a sudden boom we're here and bye your planet's blown up sucks to be you dude we're gonna take a look at goku versus beerus on king kai's planet dragon ball super round one let them fight do this so we got King Kai freaking his absolute butt off because Beerus and Whis are on their way and he knows who they are, apparently. I kind of like how they redcon all this because it's like, so you're telling me that King Kai knew who Beerus was at the beginning of Dragon Ball Z? Yeah, I mean, it's, I guess so. I mean, look at Goku over here. He's just so happy to be able to fight somebody. <laughs> He's just itching in the corner. But yeah, Goku's just hiding, and King Kai doesn't want Goku at all to get out. But Goku, of course, is not going to do that, because Goku always wants to fight the strongest person, and he puts people's safety at risk all the time, because he just wants to fight the strongest person, not caring about other people's safety at all. Rant over. At least he's a good dad, though. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> he has to be one of the worst dads I've ever seen. He has his moments here and there, but for the most part, he's, he's not around. Uh, right here, this is the moment. I got excited when I first watched Dragon Ball Z Battle of the Gods in the theaters and caught me off guard when they did the uh, basically copying the movie with different scenes, mind you, but it caught me off guard. But watching it like this, I, I still had fun. Minus one thing, buddy. You know what that one thing is? I already know what you're going to say, but yeah, what is it? Were you going to guess the uh, animation? You got it. Going from that theatrical quality amazing animation that battle of gods had to this i was not the happiest we'll say that what were your thoughts on it honestly i'm not even kidding you on this when in 2015 i think when dragon ball super first came out i was extremely excited for it 
and then it came out. I got to episode five. I'm, I'm literally not even lying. I don't even know if I've told you this or not. I got to episode five. I stopped watching it. You I literally, gave up? I literally stopped watching it because the animations were so bad. Yeah, that was, you know, like six years ago. And, of course, I went back and rewatched everything. But, yeah, I literally stopped watching it because the animations were so bad. You know, fun fact here, I guess, it took me a little while to realize how much worse, I guess, it was. Once I did notice it, I was just shocked over it all. You want to know why? Apparently, uh, the reason I heard is uh, the people that animated the first season of Super. It might have been the whole, uh, the whole uh, show and all. But from what I heard, the first few episodes were animated by a bunch of newbies, like didn't have much experience animating. And I also might be wrong on that. Uh, but, I mean, if, it, if that rumor is true, it definitely shows. I mean, that would be a good reason why it looks like this. Mm-hmm. I know I've watched different videos on that, too, talking about the different animation styles. And I think they were crunched for time, especially on some of these earlier episodes. Because, like, even during the Tournament of Power, like, most of the episodes are really, really good. But every once in a while, there's an episode where it's like, whoa, this is Dragon Ball Super again? Like, this animation is terrible. And if you'll notice, I think it was uh, Emperor Pilaf, actually. There's an episode coming up here where the outlines are super, super thick. I don't know if you remember that or not. I, I didn't notice it when I watched it. I saw a meme about it, though, and I, it's pretty bad. I mean, there's so many. I'm sure there's so many more uh, moments in time that the animation stuck out as bad in this first part. I, I can't wait to see them again as we're watching. For sure. And honestly, the Emperor Pilaf one, I think the animations actually look pretty decent for that one. It's just... It doesn't look like Dragon Ball. It looks like a different anime. It's kind of the style that I draw. Again, not that I'm a great artist, but I really like heavy, thick outlines. But yeah, we're just getting to the part here, actually, where Goku is first challenging Beerus. And this is where I really notice the animation. Because when they're still just kind of talking to each other, it's not like as good as the movie as Battle of Gods. But I mean, it's, it's doable. I think they look fine. But then when they start doing their action scenes, it literally looks like... My daughter, who's 18 months old, drew this. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty bad. Oh, what do you think here? I thought, going from the Boo Saga, Goku is such a beast, and going here now, seeing him fight Beerus, he just, he's nothing compared to him. Like, I thought it would be a closer match than this, but Super Saiyan 1 right now is doing absolutely nothing to him. Yeah, and I mean, they're going to have to do this and extend this for a while now, I guess, for just Beerus being, like, the ultimate BA and just being extremely strong. But, I mean, I do like that because you have to have these foes that are just so much stronger than, you know, Goku or Vegeta at this time. I can't wait till here in a couple of years where they have an enemy that makes Beerus look like uh, Raditz. <laughs> look like Raditz? You think that'll happen? Uh, well, okay, I see, like I said, I've, I've told you this before, I see Yamcha taking out Beerus at the very end of the <laughs> Dragon Ball franchise with one hand tied behind his back. Dude, I could see that. Him using his ultimate technique of one punch oh wait that's a different show never mind <laughs> uh speaking of we'll have to do a video on this but one punch man versus goku who would win i know that's a hot topic for a lot of people and that's, we're gonna catch some heat if we take any side so we'll see what happens with that but here we go we got super saiyan 2 coming at beerus you think this is gonna be any better i think that he does a kamehameha and completely blasts beerus's head straight off Oh, yeah, well, I think he misses, and I think he hits King Kai. <laughs> I think he actually just starts petting Beerus, and he starts purring. <laughs> well, yeah, either Beerus and, uh, or Bubbles. I could see Bubbles purring. He looks like a purr. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So how did that even work? Did you ever hear why Beerus is actually a cat? You know, no, I haven't. Now you got me curious about that. I'm going to look up some stuff here later, and <laughs> I'll get back to you on that. And got me curious. Quit doing that. Right, I guarantee it was just something goofy again, like Akira Toriyama was sitting there in bed and he was just like petting his cat one day and he was like, gosh, I want to start like a new anime, what should like the main villain be or whatever, maybe not the main villain, but you know what I mean, and then all of a sudden he just looks over at his cat named Puss in Boots and he's like, hey, this is going to be the main dude. And it actually turns out that he was looking at a dog when he did it and <laughs> yeah. just forgot that it was a dog and oh, it's a cat now. Right, and his dog was, like, purring, and we're like, that's a strange dog. What if he forgot to draw the tail on Beerus? <laughs> that would be, like, every other thing he forgets to do. But, whoa, no, no, Akira Toriyama does not forget anything. Besides everything? Yeah, I mean, I guess when you think about it, Sans did used to have tails up until Season 7, Goten and Trunks. Did they ever, I can't remember that, too, did they ever, uh, like 
Piccolo blew up the moon at the beginning of Z. Didn't they just have, like, a moon again later on in the series? Yeah, they did. I don't know if it got, like, restored when they uh, made a wish at some point, which I could see him kind of just... I could see him forgetting and putting it back in there, but I can also see him defending it later on by, like, yeah. All right, I'll give him a break on that one, I suppose. So Goku now, is he going to transform into a Super Saiyan 3 yet, or what's he doing? What if he went straight to Super Saiyan 4 right now? I would just lose my mind. Wait, Super Saiyan what? That, that does not does not sound canon. Oh, yeah. We don't care about what's canon anymore. Broly's in the picture, so everything's canon. And hopefully cooler in the future. That would be cooler. Oh, nothing be cooler than that. Mm. Oh, we got Super Saiyan 3 action now. Now he's going to kick Beerus' butt. I would say he probably just does a straight spirit bomb, even though he can't when he's Super Saiyan 3. But if he does a spirit bomb and then a KO Ken behind it, I think he's got it. So if you watched Dragon Ball GT... Some a move that Goku always did. He did it once in one of the movies. It was non-canon, of course, like all the movies besides one. Uh, Dragon Fist. You like that move? Mm. I think that'd be cool right here. Oh yeah, he did that against Lord Slug, right? No, no, I don't think he. Did. No, it was in the last movie, uh, the thirteenth, fourteenth mm. movie. Oh yeah, against Janemba or whatever. Nope, movie after that. Wrath of the Dragons, the name, but I cannot remember the number. Hmm. Harutagon was the guy he uh, did it against. Oh, I barely remember that. Yeah, this giant monster. Mm. Yeah, he, that was a pretty cool movie. I think I actually rented that a couple years ago and like watched it. So, again, the Janemba one I actually watched. Again, I probably said this on my last video, but uh, on LimeWire back in the day. And that was like kind of the last movie before I got away from Dragon Ball for a bit and er, leaving high school. And then a couple of years ago, I heard about that movie, and so I needed to watch it because that was like the only movie I'd never seen, and then I watched it, and what's the villain's name? I can't even remember. Uh, Harutagon? Sounds like a Godzilla villain. I mean, it is a giant monster. It's probably some kind of play on it. Oh, hey, look, we got fists flying and fists being blocked. Okay, that's easy for Beerus. Well, Goku's just warming up, right? Yeah, dude, pretty soon he goes like Super Saiyan 67 and just like blasts him away. 67? I was thinking more like 69. Whoa. Yeah, I mean, I expected Goku to give a bigger challenge to Beerus, at least make it more interesting, but, uh, I mean, I, I guess this is pretty cool, too. Uh, now, what's coming up here is he's going to get knocked out of Super Saiyan 3. I thought that was pretty cool when that happened. 